I know you all love learning about the brain and the prefrontal cortex. So today, let's talk about a little bit of science behind prayer and meditation. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So if you're into improving your mental and emotional well-being, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. You guys, I'm so excited. We are so close. We are so close to 10,000 followers on Instagram. So if you haven't yet, go follow me over there. I just want to get the swipe up feature. Help me because it will help you and I can send you guys some new videos, books I'm reading, all sorts of cool stuff. Just go follow me on Instagram. I love you all who are following me already. You are all amazing. I think I was at like 2,000 followers in December and now I'm at 9,000. But anyways, yeah, so this video, it actually came to mind because this is something I would teach my clients in treatment. But this comes from Amanda uh, Etherton. Amanda, if I'm saying your name wrong, I am sorry. But yeah, she has a YouTube channel. She talks about stuff. And basically she sent me this comment right here saying that she recently posted a video, a short one, and I was driving back um, and I decided to listen to it. And basically her video was talking about, is it God or is it the placebo effect? So I'm gonna talk about the science behind this because a lot of you a lot of you know um, that I'm a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery. I a, uh, got sober through 12 step programs, which promote um, your own version of a higher power or God. A lot of you who know me in some recent videos I've done, you know that I am, you know, uh, agnostic, all right? So real quick, like, especially when it comes to addiction recovery, um, a lot of people struggle with that. I was definitely one of them. And what I would teach people is like, just do it, just do it. I don't know why it's working, but just do it, right? Because that's what my experience was. But as I started to educate myself about neuroscience and all of that, I started to learn why why we need to do this. So prayer and meditation actually have the same effects on the brain, okay? So meditation, just so you all know, is completely secular if you decide for it to be secular. Like, yeah, there are forms of meditation in both both the Buddhist religion as well as like in Christian religions. Um, in Christian religions, I think it's called contemplative prayer. But anyways, there's an amazing scientist by the name of Dr. Judson Brewer. He is a neuroscientist. I think he went to Yale, I think it was Yale, but now he is like the director of research at um, the Mindfulness Institute in I believe Massachusetts. Basically what they do is they hook people up to brain scans and see what's happening in the brain when you pray or meditate, right? So anyways, you guys all remember this beautiful hand model right here? All right, for those of you who don't know this hand model, you got your spine, you got your brain stem, if you fold your thumb over, you got the amygdala, you got your hippocampus, fold these fingers over, you got the prefrontal cortex, all right? Somewhere in the back over here is something called the posterior cingulate cortex, okay? So the posterior cingulate cortex is part of our default mode network, okay? This is your default, all right? This is the selfish, self-centered part of the brain. Like, people get offended when I say that we are self-centered by nature. Sorry, it's part of the default mode network, okay? So the default no mode network in the back top back of the brain is tied in closely with the amygdala, all right? So these two communicate with each other. The amygdala is responsible for anxiety as well as your fight, flight, or freeze mechanism, right? So when, when you are like in default mode, you are more likely to be uh, stressed, more likely to be anxious. And what happens is, especially when you do get stressed or anxious, it triggers the posterior cingulate cortex because the amygdala is about survival. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna fight? Am I gonna run away? Or am I gonna freeze, right? It makes you think about you, all right? That is one of the reasons why in mass panic or like uh, when people are like, you know, trampling one another, it's because they're not thinking about everybody else, they're thinking about themselves, okay? So as you can see, the posterior cingulate cortex, not only does it make us self selfish and self-centered, but it's tied in with our stress and with our anxiety, right? So what they found, Dr. Judson Brewer, what they found is that when people meditate or pray, okay, when they meditate or pray, what happens is, is that the default mode network shuts down and the prefrontal cortex comes online. This is extremely important because the prefrontal cortex is responsible for a ton of things. One of them is logical decision making, right? So you gotta think, when you are stressed or anxious, the prefrontal cortex goes offline. Not fully offline, but it's not operating at full capacity, okay? So when you're stressed or when you're anxious, you can't make as uh, uh, good logical decisions, all right? 
the prefrontal cortex is also responsible for balancing your emotions, okay? It's responsible for emotional regulation. It's also responsible for fear modulation. What that is, how you gauge your fear, right? Should I be afraid of this or is this an irrational fear, all right? It's also responsible for things like uh, empathy as well as morality. And I can't remember if I mentioned it, but self-awareness, okay? So when we are in a stressed state of mind, the prefrontal cortex is not doing its job. So what I would often teach people and what I'm teaching you right now is even if you don't like to pray, even if you don't like to meditate, there is scientific reasons behind why you should, all right? This is going to help you greatly. So something that Amanda talked about in her video was she thinks so much. She questions everything and thinks so much, right? Like, is this really some kind of higher power or higher being when I pray? Or is this um, like a placebo effect? Here's the way I improve my mental health. I stopped caring, okay? I stopped caring. I used to be that kid who said, why? Why? Why does this work this way? Why does this work this way? So even though I kind of answered why it works that way, because when you pray or when you meditate, you get a clearer mind, like at a certain point, I was just like, you know what? I don't know why this is working, but it works. It's kind of like eating a delicious meal that you order at a restaurant, okay? I don't know how they made it, but it's delicious. So I'm just gonna quit asking questions, all right? So do me a favor, start meditating, deactivate the posterior cingulate cortex, start activating the prefrontal cortex and start to improve your mental health, all right? And those of you who haven't got the memo, my channel is partnered with the Calm app and the Calm app is my favorite meditation app and it's not just because I'm partnered with them, I've been using it for years. So make sure you check down in the description and in the pinned comment. Um, they have a bunch of free stuff on there or you can pay, I think it's like $60 for a year or you can just sign up for the free trial. Just sign up for the free trial, I think it's seven days, start meditating once a day for five or 10 minutes, and I promise you, I promise you, either A, you will start to see the changes in your life, or B, the people in your life are gonna realize, or they're gonna notice that you're a lot more tolerable to be around, all right? So, there's the science behind prayer and meditation. If you have any questions about mindfulness, meditation, whatever it is, let me know down in the comments below, but I know a lot of you have started meditating and I love you. I love you so, so, so much for it. So, I like to give you a little science behind why you should do this and why this is good for you, all right? Aside from it just strengthening that good old pre frontal cortex right here, all right? And actually, let me know down in the comments below. Tristan and I have been talking about doing the hand model, like in a shirt. Like, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Oh yeah, you guys see my cool rewired soul hoodie? Pretty sweet. All right, anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to get exclusive videos and content and private Facebook group and all that, click or tap on the Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.